Magnus Carlsen is the world's highest rated player. We'll be exploring five of his most remarkable victories against each of the other top six players, showcasing his exceptional skills and brilliance. We'll be going in depth into each game, exploring the strategies and tactics that set Magnus apart from his peers and cement his status as a true chess legend. In this game, we see Jan Nepomniachtchi taking the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen. The game begins with e4 and Magnus responds with c5, the Sicilian defense. It continues with knight f3, e6, and d4, signaling white's intention for an open game. After pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, Magnus opts for the Taimanov variation with knight c6. This opening keeps flexibility in developing the other pieces, especially the dark squared bishop, which could go to either c5 or b4. It also allows white to go for the Meroxy bind, but white chooses knight c3 instead. Magnus continues queen c7, putting the queen on a nice diagonal and defending the key d6 square. After bishop e3, Magnus plays a6, which is a typical Sicilian move, guarding b5 from potential enemy pieces and preparing for a queenside pawn break, b5. White plays g4, showing aggression and preparing to launch a kingside pawn storm. Magnus replies knight takes d4, eliminating white's centralized knight, and after queen takes d4, b5 is played, expanding on the queen side and preparing to fianchetto the light squared bishop. White continues by queenside castling, and black responds with bishop b7, attacking the e4 pawn. After king b1, black plays knight f6, putting more pressure on e4, white defends with f3, and Magnus brings his queen rook to the c-file, creating a powerful battery. White decides to press forward with the pawn storm, playing g5, attacking the knight on f6. Black doesn't want to retreat, so moves the knight to h5, keeping it active, and eyeing the f4 square. At this point, white has a space advantage, which means he prefers to keep pieces on the board, since there's more squares for them to use. On the other hand, black feels a little cramped and would like to trade pieces. Black wants to play bishop c5, forcing a trade of bishops, weakening white's control over some key dark squares. So white avoids this by playing queen d2, getting out of that skewer. And bishop c5 doesn't actually work anymore because of the undefended d7 pawn. Black continues his development with bishop e7. White plays bishop h3, threatening to trap the black knight, but Magnus is unfazed and plays b4, pushing forward on the queen side and attacking the c3 knight. White retreats the knight to e2, and now black strikes in the center with d5, challenging white's pawn on e4 and trying to open lines for his light squared bishop. White continues with his plan of bishop g4, and black defends calmly with g6. White captures the knight, destroying black's pawn structure. Then white avoids releasing the tension in the center since it would just activate black's bishop. Instead, he plays knight f4, now threatening to take on d4 and hitting the h5 pawn. Magnus captures the pawn on e4, and white doesn't recapture since there would be a brutal double attack. White replies with knight takes h5, eyeing up the potential knight f6 check. Black plays pawn takes f3, and now white could play knight f6, and having a thorn pawn on f6 could prove to be very dangerous for black. With ideas of going bishop b6, deflecting the queen away from d7. But it also simplifies the game, which I think white wanted to avoid. So he continues instead with bishop f4 attacking the queen. Black can't stray too far from the defense of d7, so he moves the queen to d8. White plays queen e3, declining the queen trade, and discover attacking the queen. Magnus blocks the attack while also centralizing the bishop. White finally plays knight f6 check, which is not as good as a move as it was previously, and black, of course, gets rid of the pesky knight. The reason it's not as good is because, going back, the knight was actually a decent attacking piece, and in some lines could go to g7. Also, white no longer has full control of the d-file like it did in the other line, eliminating some of those tactics related to queen d7. So after rook g8, we're left with a position where black actually has more active pieces. White should play bishop g3, preventing the black rook from infiltrating. 
but instead plays rook h to e1. So Magnus seizes the opportunity and creates an attack on c2. White's queen moves to a7, and rook takes c2 isn't possible here because white would capture the bishop, and the queen can't recapture because of mate, and there's also the pin, so the pawn can't recapture. And at this point, black's down material, so his best bet would be to go for a perpetual check with the rooks. So Magnus plays queen d7, trying to trade queens. But that endgame would be completely lost for white, since black is just up a pawn, and white would be forced into a very passive position. White tries queen d4 instead, but his position begins to collapse after rook c takes c2. Black defends the b-pawn with bishop c1, and now black has a devastating tactic. But it's also a very complicated one, so don't worry if you don't find every single line. The winning move that Magnus plays is rook takes c1. If the rook recaptures, then black wins the queen like this. So in the game, white took with the king. Then Magnus played queen c6, forcing king to b1. Black follows up with queen a4, threatening a checkmate in 2. So white plays rook d2, defending the second rank. But Magnus doesn't take with the queen. He takes with the bishop. If king to a1, we have this common checkmate in combination. Otherwise, white's king will get checkmated on d1. So, Nepo resigned after bishop takes a2. In this game, Magnus Carlsen is playing white against Dingler in as black. The game starts d4, knight f6, c4, and e6. Carlsen plays knight f3, avoiding the Nimzo Indian defense. And Ding plays d5, entering the queen's gambit declined. Magnus develops with knight c3, and black responds c6, creating a solid pawn formation signature of the semi-slav defense. Magnus then plays bishop g5, pinning the f6 knight, to which Ding replies h6, forcing white to react. Magnus retreats the bishop to h4, giving black time to capture on c4 and eventually hold on to the pawn with b5. White continues with e4, establishing a strong pawn center. Black throws in g5, forcing the bishop back to g3, then defends his c4 pawn with b5. White develops the bishop to e2, preparing to castle, and black plays bishop b7, developing the queen side. Magnus castles, and black plays knight b to d7. White continues with knight d2, an interesting move with the main goal of opening up the light squared bishop. Black plays queen b6, attacking the undefended d4 pawn. White then plays a4, threatening to take twice on a5 if the queen were to move. So black reinforces his pawn chain with a6. Magnus pushes forward with e5, attacking the f6 knight and gaining central space. Black moves the knight to d5. White continues with knight d to e4, eyeing some weak dark squares in black's position. Black plays c5, challenging white's center. Magnus captures the d5 knight, and black recaptures with the bishop, attacking the knight. So knight to c3 retreating and attacking the bishop. However, black wins a second pawn by capturing on d4. White takes the bishop and black recaptures. Magnus then finds a nice move. Bishop h5, pinning the f7 pawn, with the threat of playing e6, posing complex problems for black. Queen takes e6 wouldn't work because of the pin of the queen to the king. Now black has a couple ways to meet this threat. One of them is bishop e7 so that the queen can take on e6 without worrying about the pin. Instead, black responds with knight c5, defending the e6 square. But this hangs the d4 pawn, which Magnus takes. The d5 pawn is hanging now, so black plays queen e6 to defend. Magnus moves his bishop to g4, attacking black's queen. Black responds with knight b3, a counterattack, and fork. Carlson moves the queen to d1, still protecting the bishop, and black moves the queen to c6. So now Magnus captures on b5, which hits the queen again, and black avoids taking with the a pawn. He doesn't want to exchange rooks because the knight is already attacking the rook. So he takes with the queen. But now black's position starts to collapse. White plays e6 to open the e-file. And black could try a move like f6, but after, say, queen f3... White has ideas of going bishop to h5, queen f5, and infiltrating like this. So it's still just as bad. 
Instead, black takes the pawn and white recaptures with the bishop. Black moves his rook to a7 to defend the e-file in this way, and Magnus captures on d5 as well. So the material is finally even, but black takes the rook on a1. Then Magnus plays the winning move, queen f3. This threatens bishop c6, along with a host of queen checks on the e-file. There are tons of variations here, but you can trust me and Dingler in who resigned in this position that this is completely lost for black. My favorite line was this one where black saves the queen, but suffers a series of checks, which ultimately lead to a nice queen sacrifice followed by checkmate. In this game, Magnus Carlsen has the white pieces and Ali Reza Firuja is playing black. The game starts with c4, the English opening, followed by g6. Carlsen continues with g3, setting up a king kingside fianchetto, and the game proceeds with standard developing moves. Bishop g7, bishop g2, knight f6, knight c3, castles, and knight f3. Black plays d6, white replies d4, transposing into a king's Indian defense. Black plays knight c6, preparing a central pawn break. White castles, and black pushes forward with e5. Now white has three main options here, and they're all fine. Gain space with d5, take the pawn, or play e3 to keep the tension. Magnus chooses to capture the pawn, and black recaptures. The queens stare at each other, but neither side wants to take, activating the other's rook. Magnus plays bishop g5, pinning the knight, and black plays bishop e6, targeting the c4 pawn. Queen a4 comes next, connecting the rooks and defending c4. Black gets out of the pin with the plan of maneuvering the knight towards the queen side. White doesn't like that idea, so he gets rid of the knight and black recaptures. Then Magnus actually takes inspiration by that knight maneuver by playing knight d2 with the idea of going to c5. Knight e4 would come with tempo, so black moves the bishop preemptively. Then both sides move their rooks to the open d-file, and white plays knight b3, continuing his knight maneuver. Black centralizes his own knight, then comes knight c5 with the second attacker on b7. Black stops the threat with c6, blunting the long diagonal. White continues e3, attacking the knight, and this is a real problem for black. If the knight were to move, then white could substantially damage black's pawn structure by taking on e6. So black chooses bishop g4, attacking the rook. This allows Magnus to capture the knight, black can recapture with an attack on white's knight, and after it moves, black can take the rook. White recaptures, then we are left in a position where white has two knights for a rook and a pawn. Technically, material is even, but generally the side with two pieces is slightly better. Black continues queen c7, defending the c6 pawn so that he can play b6. Magnus plays queen b3, attacking b7, but in the long term, eyeing f7. Black plays b6, kicking the knight back to d3, then rook b8, preparing to open up the queen side. But black did not expect the next move, c5, opening the queen side for him. Black, of course, takes the pawn, giving his rook the semi-open file, but we see that white's queen now has a clear line of sight towards black's king. Black continues with queen a5, pressuring white's queen side pawns. But this actually puts the queen a little out of place. White takes the pawn on c5, and black plays bishop f1, hoping to trade pieces. White plays b4, hitting the queen and cementing his knight into c5. Then the big mistake from black, queen a3. This puts the queen completely out of the game, and white can go for the king without much resistance. There's only one move that's really good here. Magnus plays knight e5. And there's legitimately no good way to defend f7 because the knights cover all the squares that the rooks could go to. Black takes on b4 and white takes on f7 with check. We see king h8, then queen f6 check. After bishop g7, white has one move here that's completely winning and Magnus didn't find it. Can you spot it? White could have played knight f7 check, and after king g8, played queen e6. White's threat is to take on d8, winning a whole bunch of material, and if black moves the rook, then there's this awesome smothered mate combination. Going back, Magnus instead played queen g4, 
and it's still winning. White has various forking threats. So many. <laughs> if black tries rook d to c8, then white could take on g6, going for this checkmate threat that can only be stopped by black sacrificing the exchange. In the game, black played rook e8, and white took on c6, and then won the exchange, leaving him up a full piece. Firuja tries queen e2, but Magnus calmly plays queen d2, defending everything, and with the material deficit, black resigns. In this game, Hikaru Nakamura has the white pieces, and Magnus Carlsen is playing as black. Hikaru opens with d4, and Magnus replies with knight f6. White continues c4, and black responds e6. White plays knight f3, avoiding the Nimzo Indian defense. Magnus plays b6, entering the queens in the Indian defense. White plays g3, preparing to fianchetto his own bishop. But now that white is committing to developing the bishop this way, Magnus plays bishop a6, attacking the c4 pawn. This forces white to figure out another way to defend c4, and he chooses queen c2. Then the bishop goes back to b7, and I guess the argument is that the queen is misplaced on c2. But nothing is set in stone yet. White continues his development with bishop g7, and Magnus responds bishop b4 check. White blocks with bishop d2, and black plays a5, supporting the bishop on b4, and he wouldn't mind the capture opening the a-file for his rook. White castles, and black does the same. White pushes a3, attacking black's bishop, which leads to an exchange with bishop takes d2 and knight b takes d2. Magnus then plays d5, striking in the center. White decides to immediately release the tension as we see a pawn exchange. Then white plays knight e5, centralizing his knight and preventing black from developing his knight to c6. So Magnus plays knight a6, preparing the c5 pawn break. Now that black already committed the knight, white repositions his knight to d3. Carlson responds with queen e7, connecting his rooks and further preparing the c-pawn push. White plays e3, supporting d4, and Magnus finally breaks with c5. This leads to a series of captures before culminating into the hanging pawn structures characterized by the isolated c and d pawn island. White immediately pressures the c-pawn with rook a to c1. Magnus defends with his own rook, then the other white rook comes to the semi-open d-file. Magnus plays h6 to create some luft for the king, then queen f5 maintaining pressure on white's hanging pawns and looking to double the rooks on the c-file. Black plays a4 to lock the queenside pawns, making the b-pawn a potential target. White starts his plan with rook c2, then Magnus plays bishop c6 with the idea of moving the bishop to the king side. White doubles the rooks, then bishop d7 attacking the queen, and she only has three squares to go to. Queen d3 would be met with c5, and that makes the doubled rooks look kind of lousy. So Hikaru plays queen f4, which is actually way worse, and queen f3 is just as bad for the same reason. And see if you can find the only winning move. The move Magnus plays is g5. The queen is surprisingly trapped, since queen f3 would be met with bishop g4. So white resigns. In this game, we have Magnus Carlsen playing white against Anish Giri as black. The game starts with d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, and Magnus opts for bishop g5, the Tory attack. The idea is to quickly develop the dark squared bishop so that the knight can go to d2 and the pawn to c3, supporting a strong center. Black continues with bishop g7 while Magnus develops the knight to d2. Then h6, which prompts white to retreat the dark squared bishop to h4. Black continues with d6, preparing a potential c or e pawn push. Magnus pushes e4, grabbing space in the center and allowing his light squared bishop to be developed. Black plays bishop g5, kicking the dark squared bishop back to g3. Then black hunts down this bishop with knight h5. Magnus plays c3, reinforcing his d4 pawn. Black plays e6, going for this passive but solid system. White jumps his knight forward to c4, and black develops his knight to d7. Then knight to d2 opens a discovered attack, so black finally captures the bishop, and white recaptures. Then black plays b6 to fianchetto the light squared bishop, and Magnus immediately pushes forward on the queen side with a4. A6 is played to meet the potential A5 with B5 closing the position. 
Magnus instead develops his bishop to e3, and after bishop b7, he plays queen e7, giving robust support to the e4 pawn and creating a battery towards the queen side. Black plays queen e7, defending d6, so that c5 is possible. And white plays knight to e3, so that after c5, he can support the d5 pawn push. High level stuff, huh? Black continues knight f6, and white breaks with f4, gaining more ground in the center. Black shifts the queen over to the queen side, anticipating white's next move, which is the castle queen side. Then he clarifies the situation on the king side by capturing the f pawn, and white recaptures. Then black plays b5, trying to open up the queen side. However, Magnus strikes in the center. He captures on e6, and black can't let him take again on f7, so he recaptures. Then white pushes forward with d5, attacking the knight and opening the light squared bishop. Black recaptures the pawn and white delivers check on g6. Black plays king f8, trying to seek shelter on the king side. And now most of us would quickly capture the e5 pawn to open the f file. But Magnus finds a better way. He plays f5, since this will still ultimately open the f file, but now black would have to waste time in order to defend the e6 pawn, since capturing on f5 would just help white. Black instead tries to create counterplay with b4, but Magnus just ignores this and captures on e6. Black takes on c3, and white jumps forward with the knight, allowing black to take again on b2. This time Magnus takes the pawn with the queen, and we notice how powerful white's position is. The queen is eyeing down the b-file, the rook dominates the open d-file, and the knights are ready to infiltrate black's position. Black plays bishop c8, attacking the e-pawn, and Magnus spots a way to simplify the game into a winning endgame. He plays queen b6, and black has no choice but to trade queens, since otherwise rook d8 would be devastating. Then the knight recaptures, hitting the rook and the bishop. The rook moves to the only square that still defends the bishop before white takes and black recaptures. Then the winning move, knight f5. The threat being to play e7, followed by rook d8 and making a queen. If I could. <laughs> and there's just no way to stop that. King g8 loses to the fork. Rook e8, and there's this neat trick, not even taking the rook, but sacrificing your own rook to have this pawn fork. Anish resigns after knight f5. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more.